Welcome to another edition of Bad Finds. Today we begin a multi-part series where we'll be looking at the failed system, the Philips CDI. Let me tell you, I have a lot to say about this system, so much that it's going to take me several videos in order to cover it all. This first part will give a brief overview as well as a look at the system's non-gaming components. The second part we will have a look at some of the games that came out on the Philips CDI. Now if you've seen the Angry Video Game Nerd Sega CD review, you know exactly where this is going. Parts 3, 4, and 5 will examine in detail the Unholy Triforce, which are Link, the Faces of Evil, Zelda, the Wand of Gamelon, and Zelda's Adventure. Part 6 will cover Hotel Mario, and Part 7 will close out the series with some final remarks. So, without further ado, let's begin. Ultimate Suckage, the Philips CDI. The CDI was first released in 1991, around the same time as the Super Nintendo, retailing for around $700. Originally marketed as a robust home entertainment system, the CDI was capable of playing music, games, video CDs, and running multimedia applications. Over the lifespan of the CDI, they released several models, such as the 200 series, which looked like a regular CD player. In addition, they sold the portable 300 series and the high-end professional 600 series. Later on, they released the 400 series which resembled a gaming console with a pop-open lid similar to the PSX. This CDI right here is a 450 model. Here we have a 900 series CDI and what really shocked me was how big it is. I mean look, this thing is bigger than the PS3. Now let's compare it to the Xbox 360. Now for the ultimate test. Wow, what a monstrosity. This thing is bigger than the 360 and the brick. It's like a St. Bernard fucking a Chihuahua. Initially, the CDI's focus was educational and instructional titles serving a wide range of ages. Here we have a typical kid's title called Crayon Factory. It starts off with a story about a bunch of robots who work at a crayon factory, and later on, some asshole pin tries to get the factory shut down. He eventually gets fired, and then you can play around in the factory by mixing colors and labeling crayons. Another kid's title is Sandy's Circus. Here you color characters and then watch animation with the characters you used or something like that. Flintstone's Jetson's Time Warp. Here Fred Flintstone and George Jetson switch places in time and you use the characters to explore the universe that they're trapped in. So here's George Jetson snooping around Fred's house. A lava lamp. Groovy. You know, this would cost a small fortune at the solar swap meet. Uh, you know what? Let's go see what Fred's doing. How about this button? Oh, I remember Spacely Sprockets from the show. Spacely! Hello. It's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy your visit. Besides kitty stuff, there was the educational stuff like Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia and Lifetime Astrology. There was a wide range of titles relating to a myriad of subjects, which could be anything from the Titanic, coins, and magic, just to name a few. You could even learn foreign languages on the CDI. There was also interactive applications such as No World Order. Here you have a convoluted interface and you make music. Yeah, sounds like shit. The CDI could also play video CDs which required you to install a cartridge so the machine could decode MPEG-1. During my shopping on eBay, one of the lots I won had this video CD movie called A Boy and His Dog. 
I never bothered to watch this movie, and probably never will. There were also several types of controllers, presumably each being better suited for certain applications, like game controllers for the games and a remote for the video CDs. They even had a big trackball controller for the kiddies. As you can see, the CDI had a multitude of applications, and there weren't that many games at first. For what it was worth, the Philips CDI was a decent educational tool, if you could afford one. The few games that did exist were mainly adaptations of game shows such as Joker's Wild or Name That Tune, or board games like Clue, Backgammon, or Battleship. There were also some sports games like tennis for example. In the early years of the CDI, they would run infomercials at night, advertising it as the end all be all of home entertainment. In 1994, however, that changed as the CDI made a more serious attempt to penetrate the console gaming market. Join us for part two and we'll have a look at some of the games that came out on the CDI.